something you just said there at the end that I want to go to. The first six months, $800, right? First yeah. year. And I think sometimes people walk into your story, right? And they see they see the events that are sold out, right? Yeah. But you talk about the first event that was not sold out, right? They no, see seven, eight-figure business. They see all of that, but they don't see the first six months. Talk to us about what are some of the things for someone who's looking to get started? What are some of the things that you know now that you wish you knew when you were first getting started with your own business? You know, the first six months set it up, set us up for the first six figure year. So our first six months, we were doing cold outreach. I was reaching out to people who had communities. I was speaking in other people's communities. I was pitching myself to be on TV. I was pitching myself for awards. I was pitching myself for press. I was actively engaged in the sales process because you have to build what's called a sales pipeline. That pipeline means it's not going to start raining money right away. But every like you, you're never living in the blessings that you gained or earned like today. Like right now, I'm living in the work of last year. So the work that I do this year determines the work of next year. So if I get lazy on this year, I'm setting myself up for a really bad 2025 not a really bad 2024 because 2024 was built in 2023, 2022 and previous years. So I wish I would have known. I think like I remember just going after it. And I think that's the right way to do it. One thing I do wish I would have known is. um, I don't like. Maybe I wish I would have known that as you grow your business, um, you aren't going to be able to take everyone with you. Hmm. Like a lot of the friends that I made when I was first starting are, I mean, I hate, I don't want to say it like that, but there are some people that I met when I first started my business, not necessarily friends, but just people I met along my journey, they are still in the exact same position. And that's cool until they start seeing you climb and climb and climb and climb. And they're like, we started at the same time. Why is her life so different? But one of the things that, you know, is really important, and I do wish I would have realized this earlier the things that make me successful as an entrepreneur were the things that did not make me successful as an employee. So the more I leaned into who I am uniquely and divinely, the more revenue I was able to make, the more impact I was able to make, the more my influence grew. And I think that some people's businesses don't grow because they don't grow personally. So I started investing in my business before I even made money. I hired my first VA before I even made a dollar. I just found her on Fiverr and hired her right out the gate. I started hiring my first coach before I had any money. I just paid for whatever I could pay for to get ahead. I kept reading books. I did not listen to any books that were not about business. Like there was a level of intensity about how I started my business that has helped me to continue to grow my business even now. And what I'm seeing in entrepreneurship is like a dilution of what it takes. So a lot of people are just lying and saying like, oh, you're just going to be on the beach. It's not going to be hard work. It's not going to be this. It's not going to be that. And unfortunately, if you don't build discipline to work hard, then you will not grow your business because you don't grow your business by doing the same thing year over year. You grow your business by accelerating your output year over year. And it doesn't have to be your personal output. You build a team and then they can have an output. So You have to get better at a variety of things at the exact same time. You have to be learning and doing at the exact same time. And it is going to take work. There are going to be losses at every level and you never arrive. There's not a, there's not a revenue marker that you hit and now you don't got to do no more work. I think in the beginning I was like looking for that marker. I was like, okay, we hit six figures. And I'm like, dang, I'm still doing all this work. Oh, we hit seven figures, man. I'm still doing all this work. We hit multiple six, seven figures. Oh, I'm still doing all this work. What's going on? And it wasn't until I had a mentor that was like, Ashley, you don't do less because you have a team. You actually just have to do more of different things. So I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm not doing anything wrong. And then I started studying Tyler Perry and Beyonce from the perspective of how they work and realized Tyler Perry's still writing scripts and he's a billionaire. Wow, he's still on sets. Wow, Beyonce's still a part of her production. Okay, so I'm not doing anything wrong. I started thinking, Maybe I'm doing something wrong because everybody's talking about they on the beach. And I'm just like, I'm not on the beach. (laughs) So like I take sabbaticals, I take vacations, but day to day I am in my business actively attempting to grow it every single day. And so, you know, that's something that I wish I would have known is that that same level of work ethic you needed as a trial lawyer working 18 hour days. You have that work ethic for what you are supposed to do on the earth. 
you don't have that work ethic just because you was working hard then and you don't have to work hard now. I've never not, I've always liked hard work. Like I don't, I've always done things that I've enjoyed enough where it didn't feel laborious, but yeah, I just wish I would have known that you can't keep your eyes on other people's paper and pass your own test. 